All righty, good morning. Good morning. I'm Donovan Richards, Chair of the Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises. And this morning, we're joined by Council Members Gorodnik, Gentili, Gradinchik, and Council Member Rose, uh, who has brought us out this morning. We'll be holding a vote on one application today. We'll be voting to approve land use item number 759 and 760, the Seventh Avenue Retail Development. This is an application for a special permit pursuant to section 74-922 of the zoning resolution to allow large retail establishments and for an amendment to the city map that would facilitate the South Avenue re retail development, including ABJs. The project comprised of 219,377 square feet would include 838 required accessory parking spaces, Councilmember Rose has negotiated significant commitments from the developer regarding enhanced stormwater management through additional bioswells, extra plantings, the use of permeable pavers, energy efficiency measures, a designated viewing area, additional and expanded traffic studies, and other quality of life provisions. All of these benefits would not have been provided in an as of right project. I will now go to Councilmember Rose, who's done a phenomenal job at making this the most energy efficient project that I've seen in a while, uh, especially in Staten Island, where it's, it's uh, needed uh, immensely. And I want to thank her for her leadership in uh, getting this done. I will go to Councilmember Rose for statements now. Thank you, Chair Richards. And I, I want to thank you for your patience and indulgence. I, I know that um, I got you out here earlier than than uh, normal for a stated day. Um, and I really do appreciate all of your help in us getting to this point. And so we have before us today an application for a zoning special permit to allow retail establishments larger than 10,000 square feet and a mapping action that will remove unbuilt map streets to prevent development in adjacent wetlands on a property that's located at the corner of Forest and South Avenues in the neighborhood of Mariners Harbor. There has been a lot of misinformation swirling about this development. So let me set the record straight. All tidal wetlands will be protected and strengthened with the removal of harmful, harmful invasive species and the planting of 2,200 native trees and 9,600 shrubs while preserving more than 1,100 existing mature trees. I've spent hours in meetings with the applicants, with land use experts, and with local residents to arrive at a project that delivers smart planning, environmental preservation, sustainability, resiliency, and economic development. On several occasions, I hosted meetings in my office that allowed residents to speak directly with the developers and, envir and environmental and traffic specialists to resolve their legitimate concerns. I've been sensitive to the feedback from all voices, positive and negative, and I've taken their feedback to the negotiating table and worked up to the last minute, as you all can attest, to secure the best outcome for my constituents. Let me be clear, the applicants can put shovels in the ground tomorrow for a project of the same footprint with no approval from the city council needed. But by undertaking this land use process, we have now a development that respects the needs of this environmental justice community, increases our resiliency, decreases our carbon footprint, and brings jobs to local residents and groceries to a food desert. While the applicant is required by state and federal regulations to manage all stormwater on the site at the same rate as the land currently does, my negotiations have secured a commitment to construct several additional bioswales. A bioswale filters stormwater and diverts it from city storm drains. In this case, they hold and filter stormwater and release at a rate and pattern identical to current conditions. This project has a series of eight foot wide bioswales throughout the parking lot, as well as two 16 foot wide bioswales in the parking lot. The applicant has also committed to a large aerated retention pond area, new trees and dry wells in the parking lot. As a result of our negotiations, the applicant will install 
additional bioswales along all of the proposed street tree pits at the perimeter of the project site and include permeable pavers on the sidewalks lining the enlarged bioswales proposed for this site. Finally, in our negotiations last week, the developer agreed to add a sizable 14,000 119 square foot bioswale at the northwestern portion of this site. These improvements made during negotiations increase the permeable space on this site by 16,000 square feet over the original proposal. These features will manage rainfall from storms that well exceed the rainfall of hurricanes Irene and Sandy combined. The applicant has also committed to a landscape screening along the length of South Avenue to preserve the existing aesthetics. Through my negotiations, I have also secured a public viewing area of the wetlands along the southwest portion of the development site that will include public benches and signage to prevent information about existing natural features. The applicant has committed to installing solar panels on the roof of the development, as well as skylights, cool roof enhancements, and LED motion detected lighting to minimize the carbon footprint of this development. The applicant is required to file documentation with the state to ensure that the development is meeting all requirements to manage stormwater on this site at the rate that existed before development and that the new plantings are functioning as described in the stormwater mitigation plan. These documents will also be filed with my office. Additionally, we are including a traffic monitoring program that will be developed in close coordination with my office. We will begin this study sooner than originally proposed to ensure minimal disruption to the neighboring residents. A second traffic monitoring program will include other intersections of concern that may be impacted by new construction proposed in the area, area in the next two years. All large truck traffic will use Forest Avenue a commercial corridor rather than the more residential street, South Avenue. The applicant will meet with my office quarterly to review the traffic mitigation program and address any traffic concerns produced by this project. The largest expected tenant, tenant on the site, BJ's Wholesale Club, will host a job fair with my office to provide in-person opportunities to meet hiring representatives providing early notification to Community Board 1 and my office for other job hiring opportunities and reporting to my office on the results of their local hiring efforts. The applicant has also committed to soliciting bids for construction contracts and subcontracts from local and MWBE businesses. The applicant will encourage future tenants on the site to conduct the same outreach efforts as BJ's. I want to be clear to anyone encouraging a no vote on this project. A no vote would bring us a development with the same footprint, but without any of these commitments I've just listed. A no vote would mean no increased permeability and bioswales, no solar panels and skylights, without benches and signage, no measures to preserve aesthetics, no local and MWB hiring commitments, and no traffic evaluation or mitigation. Contrary to what has been said, this land use agreement is a win for protecting the environment. I am voting yes on this application because after months of negotiations, we have a project that represents smart, forward-thinking, environmentally conscious planning and responds to the real concerns and needs that I hear overwhelmingly from the community and I urge my colleagues to vote yes with me. I want to thank Speaker Melissa Mark Viverito for her um, assistance in this land use. I want to thank our Land Use Committee Chair David Greenfield for his patience <laughs> for um, extending um, our time so that we could get to this point, and our Zoning Chair Donovan Richards for his patience and his input, Ramon Martinez for what Ramon does best, <laughs> and our amazing land use team, Raju Mann, Amy Levitan, Julie Lubin, and John Douglas, 
whose expertise got us to this point where I believe this is the best project that we could have. So I thank you all for your help in this effort. Thank you, Councilmember Rose. And now we will go to the vote. I, I will now call a vote to approve land use items number 759 and 760, the South Avenue Retail Development. Council, please call the roll. Chair Richards. Uh, congratulations, I vote aye. Councilmember Gentile. With my kudos to my friend and colleague, Debbie Rose, I vote aye. Councilmember Grodnick. Aye. Councilmember Reynoso. I vote aye. Councilmember Torres. Councilmember Gradenchik. <laughs> By a vote of six in the affirmative, zero negatives, and zero abstentions, land use items 759 and 760 are approved and referred to the full land use committee. I'm going to hold the vote open for uh, five minutes. Thank you. <laughs> 